Hey, God bless you, my friend and sister Sharon, and today we are discussing five things you will experience when you begin to speak up for God, for the gospel of Jesus Christ, when you begin to defend the standards of God. And this is after, friends, we have removed that beam out of our own eye, and we know that we are walking in the straight and the narrow path. We know we have laid down our lives. We are serious about our salvation. Friends, you can ex fact that there is going to be friction with the status quo. It's no way possible, friends, that you can end up walking with God, seeking to work the harvest, and you not stand out just like this yellow flower is protruding from the rest. You could expect, friends, you will become a target for many, which is number one, you could expect to be talked about and oftentimes just downright slandered by those who oppose the truth. They don't want the truth. They're not living in the truth. They are just Bible thumpers. They like to debate. They like to argue. They have an excuse for everything under the sun, except for simply just saying amen and amen. When the truth comes, they got something for it all. Instead of just saying, I'm guilty and go away quietly to get their business straight with God, they will come for you. So friends, You must expect to stand out from the rest with this great gospel, lifting up the powerful name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh, it's a price to pay, my friend. Number one, you will be slandered. You will be talked about. Number two, there will be a constant conflict within your own soul. Oh, yes, friends, when you are constantly seeing all of the hypocrisy and you see all of the waywardness of religious people who do not know Jesus, do not follow Jesus, do not know the the four gospels whatsoever, they don't know that they have been liberated by the shed blood of Jesus. You are constantly hearing people quote Old Testament laws and they are bound in chains of sin. Oh, friends, it will bring con- Confliction to your soul. You will find yourself battling at times from within to maintain your own posture of peace and joy with the Father because there's so much opposition, friends. Your soul will fill it. You will fill it. There will be days where you will even question many things because there's so much opposition. There's so much darkness. There's so many people living in the orange, if you will. The the orange flower is dominant. This little yellow flower is just standing out all by itself. (laughs) So friends, if that's you standing out the bunch, (laughs) you will have conflict constantly within the soul because you're surrounded by those who oppose the truth. Number three, you will lose friends and family. Oh, yes, friends, you can get ready. The scriptures tell us. You will have people, they're just going to shake their head and walk away from you. They're going to call you crazy. They're going to call you, no. They, this is their favorite line. You you so heavenly minded, you know, you, you're not earthly good. And they don't know what they're saying is the truth. That's good when they tell you, you need to calm down. You too earthly mind, too heavenly minded. That's the reason why you don't get along with them. <laughs> Because, friends, they all about the here and the now and the earthy. They want houses, cars, and land. And for those that ain't got no man, they want a man. And the man, the men want the wives, friends. Oh, you going to lose them. <laughs> They're not going to understand. They're not going to understand. And the scriptures tell us that the carnal man does not receive, nor can he, those things that are spiritual. So, yes, friends, you're going to lose friends. And you, you got to understand We cannot have inordinate allegiance to our family. I don't care if it's your mother, your brother, your grandmother. Friends, your allegiance, according to Luke chapter 14, Jesus said it must be to him. 
We cannot love anyone more than our Messiah because he is the one that has brought us with his precious blood. Your mother, your father, your kids did not lay down their lives for your soul. So friends, expect to lose friends and family. Number four, you will at times fight loneliness. You'll fight it. You'll feel like, man, I'm just all out here by myself (laughs) because everybody is going in that wide road. So number four, you will sometimes find yourself lonely. Or or, or let me take that back. You're you're alone far as people, but not in the spirit. Not in the spirit, friends. When we are are heavenly minded and we're focused on the harvest, you might stand out from the bunch, but the inward man is strong and full of the abiding presence of God. That's right. He said, if you abide in me, see abiding in Christ, it will transcend loneliness. See people who are lonely are not in the harvest. I can guarantee you, my friends, if you deal or struggle with loneliness, you're not in the harvest. You are not seeking out people to challenge where they're going to spend eternity. You are not working your talents and your gifts for the glory of God. Our talents, everything, we utilize them to help our fellow man. I don't care what money you make, friends. When you really get after this harvest, you dedicate all that you do because you want to help your fellow man and you want to challenge them regarding eternity. So friends, that lonely thing is lack of purpose. That's right. How can you be about the father's business? Think about this, friends. How can you be about the father's business and you are self uh, consumed with the fact that you don't think you have no body? Because see, when you in the harvest, you so busy trying to get some directives and what to do and how to do it, friends. The last thing you thinking about is yourself. Because you got to remember, loneliness emanates from self-occupation. When you're occupied with yourself, oh, friends, you locking yourself down. But friends, when it comes to in the natural, more than likely, you're going to fight just sometimes looking around saying, wow, I'm all by myself most of the time. (laughs) Because you don't want to be around foolishness. You don't want to deal with people who are not abiding. Amen. Last but not least is number five. You will at times fight anger. When you are uh, allowing your light to shine for Christ, you are defending the gospel of Jesus. You are in that straight and narrow path and you know, friends, you know the way and you're not making no excuses. You will fight anger because the hypocrisy of what you see of people who claim the other orange uh, bunch crew, (laughs) you're the little yellow one and all those around you. Notice that these flowers all look alike. They look alike, but this yellow one has a whole different hue. It's a whole different uh, expression of beauty. And let me tell you, you will become angry, friends, when you keep looking around, hearing all these people claiming to be followers of Jesus. And when you examine the fruit, and you look into their lives closer, you are, all you could do is shake your head. Oh, it'll make you angry, friends. But we harness that, we give it to God, and we allow the joy of the Lord, we let the sun shine in daily. We allow the sun, the S-O-N, the the salvation through our Messiah, our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's what keeps our petals, that's what keeps our flowers in bloom. No matter what the season, our hearts will shine bright when we keep our focus on what is right and knowing we have been redeemed and it is worth all of the the things that we go through friends with the orange bunches of flowers all around he or she that has an ear to hear let your light shine before men let them see your good works and glorify God it is worth any and everything we go through, my friend. Till next time, let the sun, S-O-N, shine on in. 
God bless you, my friend. Till next time.